Welcome to Roundhouse Roulette, a Walker, Texas Ranger podcast. Each week we recap and review one of the 200 existing Walker, Texas Ranger episodes randomly selected by Roundhouse Roulette. We'd like to thank those of you who've purchased Roundhouse Roulette t-shirts this past week. In case you didn't know, for the month of March, we'll actually be donating all the proceeds of our t-shirts to help out with the Texas recovery efforts. Help us do some good if you can and get on over and get yourself a Roundhouse Roulette shirt. After all, we wouldn't have a podcast if it wasn't for Texas. I'm Evan Dalton, here with my brother Adam. What up, what up? And a man who has been known to daydream about cow tipping, Mr. Bob Leahy. <laughs> Hey, how's it going? Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic now that we're here. Yeah. Well, we'd like to thank you all for joining us as we revisit Chuck Norris's 1990s deep dive into lesser known agricultural crimes. Today, we will recap and review season three, episode two, Branded, where the Rangers scramble to uncover a lucrative cattle rustling operation after a hashtag old friend gets turned into a cow patty but <laughs> before we squeeze into our jeans grab our branding irons and prepare to dive face first into a fresh cow turd join us <laughs> as we pull up a stool at cd's bar and grill howdy partners fancy meeting you here oh i reckon it is there partner it's been a while since we've cracked a fresh one on the normal podcast i think what is a uh, cd serving up this week he's serving us up a night crew american strong ale Mm. which is a collaborative concoction by Night Shift Brewery in Everett, Massachusetts, and Crew Brew Brewery, say that five times fast, mm. in Raynham, Massachusetts. Wow, instead of a turf war, we've got a uh, brew ha yeah. Well, according to its two creators, they state, we crafted an elegantly simple recipe to brew this deeply complex American strong ale. Night Crew challenges and rewards the palate with flavors full of hops and malts in every sip. A beautifully deep, dark amber color leads to notes of caramel, raisin, pine, dried cherry, and plum. We hope Night Crew is a reward to pair with whatever your own night has in store. I love how it was simple, but it's also complex. And they've got pretty much every flavor known to man in this, so it should be good. I'm looking forward to trying to find pine and dried cherry in this one. But you guys ready to see what our night has in store? I'm pretty sure we know what it has in store for us. Mm -hmm. Loads uh, of walker. So. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, I got caramel. Yeah. Got pine. That's about all I got. It's got a real bitter, like, kick to it. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely complex, and it's definitely got some bitterness to it that I guess is what they're talking about when they're saying it challenges the palate. But, uh, you know, generally speaking, I don't want my palate to be challenged, but uh, <laughs> this is a challenge I'm willing to accept. Yeah, I'm enjoying it already and look forward to savoring this pint uh, while talking about branding cattle. So, <laughs> Is that what our night has in store for us? Yeah, And I know that we all uh, know a lot about this topic, so I'm curious to see what we get into with this one. Well, this, this is a pretty potent potable, so I think our banter will be pretty good tonight. They hide the ABV on this at the bottom of the can. <laughs> 8%. Okay. All right. So it's got a little boost. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Night Crew, Boom. it's a cool brew. Check it out. We'll put a link up on our episode page. Maybe we should check in with the socials first here. Let's dive in. Oh, our buddy Mondo, right? Yeah. So he's listening to our fan fiction episode. It's making me want to write a Walker versus Vic Mackey episode. I don't get the reference. Hopefully you guys do. Vic Mackey is Michael Chiklis's character from The Shield. I still have never <laughs> seen that show. And I have so many people that tell me I have to. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever actually seen a full episode of The Shield, but I did enjoy Michael Chiklis as The Thing. So there you go. Mm, mm. I thought he was great. He was, well, the, he was the only good thing to come out of those. I think uh, Mondo's the man for the job for some fanfic. Looking at some of the uh, stories up there on the Walker Texas Ranger fanfic, it doesn't look like they deny any stories either. So he should right. be easily published. Yeah. Let's just say if they <laughs> did deny stories, I think um, it's for a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I did tell him, don't forget the love scenes, because that's what really sells it. 
Yeah, I mean, you could write paragraphs about the moonlight reflecting off of Michael Chiklis's shaved head. Mm, and then something to do with Walker's beard and something to do with uh, losing his belt buckle, and you're all good. All right. Let your imagination <laughs> fill in the blanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the episode can be called Rough and Rowdy. Perfect. A friend of the show, Molly Blue, posted up. Oh, nice. She says, I just tried to explain the premise of the PBS show Wishbone, and he didn't believe me that it could ever possibly be good. I thusly made him watch one, and it's still good 25 years later. I guess she must have showed her her husband, Nick, Wishbone. Now, Evan, you and I watched Wishbone all day long growing up, right? When we got back from school. Absolutely. And yeah, Wishbone was also filmed in uh, Central Texas, and um they literally have actors from the kid show wishbone in walker texas ranger yeah in fact i think in this episode there might be a dude who was in tons of wishbone episodes i need i need to i'm <laughs> checking this I'm checking this right now okay while you do that front of the show mignon posted up all the shows she worked on and on top of script supervising almost all of the seasons of walker texas ranger she was also a script supervisor on the TV show Wishbone. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Have you ever seen the show Wishbone, Bob? I have not. It's a dog, right? Yeah, it was on PBS. It was like a live dog was the main character. As and opposed to a dead dog? <laughs> well, it's like a cartoon dog. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, so he's a, a, a short-haired Jack Russell Terrier. It was basically a dog that was familiar with the classics of literature, from Mark Twain all the way back to uh, Homer, mm. and um, he school. would rec- yeah he would recognize that life mirrors history, and he'd say, "Oh no, my owner and his family are having these problems." This reminds me of my favorite Mark Twain novel, Huckleberry Finn, and then they basically had a Jack Russell Terrier that didn't mind being dressed up in a bunch of different human clothes and so they would just put it in human clothes and have this really uh animated voiceover artist yeah really obnoxious uh exuberant uh which perfect voice for a jack russell terrier i guess because they're just like off the wall but yeah this guy's voiceover would be for the dog and then humans would act with this dog and probably in the 90s they were able to give like a sedative to the dog so they'd actually stay still for it (laughs) yep pretty much probably um but yeah it it made for some pretty ridiculous moments because the uh, wardrobe for present day was pretty much the same as like an early walker texas ranger so like plaid shirts six sizes too large Mm -hmm. um mom jeans and all that so it's great show all around and um you know it lets people be familiar with pared down idealized versions of pieces of literature and i believe we've already seen the crazy neighbor from wishbone in one of the episodes we've done on a podcast here right yep and the mother of wishbone's owner she plays like an investigative reporter in a few episodes in the first season or so Hmm. but uh there was one episode where wishbone's owner who was a boy he said something to like piss off all his friends and and they got angry at him and at the end of the episode the way he got his friends back was bringing a pizza to them and he put a frowny face made of pepperonis on the pizza and wrote i'm sorry on the inside cover (laughs) it's pretty touching but the dog did that no uh the dog's owner yeah because it was like a pretty impressive dog yeah but uh, I only bring that up because uh, one time at band practice, I threw a drumstick and hit our friend Kevin, and I made up to him by copying a wishbone. We delivered him a pizza with frowny, <laughs> frowny face pepperonis <laughs> while he was working at Hollywood Video. Ooh, wow, a lot, a lot to unpack there. So thank you, wishbone. Just don't tell Kevin. Wait, first of all, you, can, you shouldn't throw drumsticks, dude. Like that's dangerous. I know, man. I was. A, did a you learn your dude. lesson? I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I don't even like it when at concerts. Remember concerts? No. No. Well, there were these <laughs> things where people would play music and people would come out to join and like stand there and watch. And sometimes the drummers will throw drumsticks into the crowd. It's got to be my like most old man rant. You put someone's eye out. Not if you're wearing Walker's aviators from this episode. 
Oh, that was written really Pretty nice. good. Yeah. You yeah. know they're bulletproof, too. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, there are at least two actors from this episode that were in Wishbone. So. <laughs> I'm not sure he's the same guy, though. I, I can't confirm that because this character, although he eats a cow pie. Um, he's uncredited. He's uncredited, I believe. He, did, so. he didn't, get, didn't get credit for falling in shit. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, just crazy uh, wishbone connections here with Walker. Well, we've got a lot to cover this week, so let's get on into it. If you're watching along at home and don't want any spoilers, hit pause and watch Season 3, Episode 2, Branded. And come on right back to us. Welcome back. Let's dig into this one. This episode originally aired on October 1st, way back in 1994. And it opens on the darkened home of an apparent old friend. (laughs) Right. Coming in hot with the old friend. Yeah. And uh, (laughs) we know this because the old friend is literally looking at a picture of himself with Walker. So we're like, oh, okay. Very efficient storytelling. Yeah. Did you guys get the feeling that this guy was going to kill himself? Because that's what I thought. Uh, I wasn't maybe, sure. Maybe I went to a dark place. but or Like he was yeah. under siege or something? The moment we f- saw what was going on, I was like, this guy's gone. He gone. Yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway. <laughs> so yeah, this guy is, um, he's an older gentleman who is, you know, a decorated war veteran. He has a purple heart on the wall as well. And he has lots of guns and he's loading them up. Very good. Promising. Yeah. Yep, he's getting ready to uh, go out into the field. And so he does, and we catch him spying on some people loading a bunch of cattle into some 18-wheelers. In the middle of the night, so you know it's not above board. Mm. Yeah, bad news bears. What we got here is some grade A high-stakes cattle rustling going down. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And uh, this guy pops out from behind a tree, and the game is afoot. He pulls out his gun and is like, I was wondering why I couldn't catch you guys. And we're like, okay, that's a weird line, but okay. You guys are always one step ahead of me. Hmm. Mm, yes. <laughs> exactly. He's about to try to bring them in, but someone comes from behind him, startles him, and they smack him with a rock or something. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. hit him with. And the guy he was talking to, who was like the main bad guy of this episode, he, I guess, knew this ranger. He knew that he was on to him, but the ranger could never catch him in time but can we just talk about this guy's whiskers formidable yeah i mean (laughs) his stash was on point it wasn't Mm -hmm. like chuck norris's almost painted on mustache it had bristles like if he took a sip of milk half the glass would be in his mustache oh yeah yeah just (laughs) he's a a straw only guy (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) a walrus stash yeah, so yeah. Western shirt, super tight Wranglers, walrus stash, cowboy hat, and he just watched the guy who was trying to get him arrested get hit in the head and knocked on the ground. But the guy's still alive, and his cronies are like, man, what are we going to do? He knows you, and he's still alive. And the guy with the walrus mustache is like, just get out of here with the cattle. I'll figure it out. So they all leave, and you're like, all right, well, so we know he's going to kill him. How is he going to do it? It wasn't really a humane way to kill somebody. Um, <laughs> if you're going to kill somebody, right? And I would never kill somebody. I'm, I'm just saying. If you're going to do it, do it in an honorable way. A humane Dig- way, you're right? Digging yourself quite a hole here. <laughs> but I'm just saying it was kind of, it was very grandiose, right? Um, it took a lot of effort. Not by them. I mean. <laughs> and. It was kind of a um, chicken way to do it. I I can see that. Should we tell the listeners how he died? The cattle rustlers only took half of the cattle, and they said, oh, there's plenty, so when we come back, we can get the rest of them. So the remainder of the cattle were just sort of hanging out. It's nighttime, you know, there's some lights around, but it's nighttime. And uh, yeah, Walrus Stash just jumps on his horse and uh, uses his skills of driving cattle, and he drives that herd of cattle right over this guy who was going to bust him. Death by mm. stampede. Yeah, and he comes to just as he meets his demise. Let me just say that um, <laughs> he met his demise the same way that Mufasa does in Lion King. <sighs> and Lion King came out only a couple months prior to this. Mm. So, I don't know. That's kind eerie of eerie similarities here. 
kind of a stretch, but but yeah, I would like to think that Walker was pulling from Lion King. <laughs> I like to think it was the other way around. Somehow they filmed this before. Mm, yeah, it probably got back to Disney. Yeah, and then they <laughs> scrambled to animate that. Yeah, I think that Adam's uh, Walker Stration this week perfectly depicts the moment of terror. Um, <laughs> and uh, I think the fear that can be struck into the heart of any innocent person by a seemingly mindless herd beast. <laughs> See, this guy gets just like hella cow stomped. But we're left to draw that conclusion because uh, we don't actually see it happen, which is good. Now, was that stock footage? It was literally stock footage, but no, they filmed it for the episode, yeah. And they had, like, a stunt guy lying on the ground close to where they drove the cattle. So, there, I think there was some danger in that, because yeah. you can't really guarantee where the cows are going to be. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm assuming when the camera panned away, he, like, rolled out of the way. And they're like, we'll make him wear, like, a trench coat, so pretty much anyone can be that character. Some kind of turtle in a trench coat. <laughs> so, yeah, he... Just gets left behind there after getting cow stomped. Hard cut to daytime. We're at a roundup, which is a thing. And uh, not only is it a roundup, it's a roundup to sponsor another thing that we're often subjected to on Walker. And that's the Kick Drugs Out of America campaign. Mm, Indeed. And uh, Walker is on horseback driving some cattle and he's making everyone look bad, right? Yeah, I was pretty impressed by that. It actually made me start wondering, like, wait, is that like... Is he actually doing that? Is that hard? I don't know anything about... It was the horse doing the work, I guess, is what I'm asking. I think he was doing that. I think that takes a person to do. Yeah. It, no, it's a, it's a communication. When you ride a horse, it's a trust thing, man. You got to earn that trust. And Chuck Norris apparently did with that horse because they were doing some pretty intricate moves, I would say. I was impressed, too. He is able to speak to the animals. <laughs> For sure. Telekinesis, For sure. So. That yeah. doesn't hurt. Oh, man. Yeah, so he's, you know, driving cattle or whatever. It's a fundraiser. There's a band there. CD is chirping away with the band. <laughs> I don't know why, but he is. Yeah. He's, he's just, he's charisma. He's pure charisma. There's like two acoustic guitars, a harmonica player. I think now is a really good time to um, address the musical choices that were made in this episode. Um I think they're um, questionable at best. I, I I wrote I wrote down music jarring. True. If this episode, if the dialogue were at like a ten, okay, like a one out of ten, and they were a ten, the music would be like a thirty yeah. in volume. Yeah, and like, <laughs> there's a reason Bob thought the guy was gonna kill himself at the beginning. It's because the music is like over the top it's suspenseful with like fake horns and timpanies they use timpanies <laughs> yeah, I didn't notice that. and those don't sound fake and neither does it's either a bassoon or possibly a bass yeah, clarinet. yeah right mm, yeah that's, that's definitely, definitely real midi. i think that's midi clarinet that's gotta be midi. No, that, that use that low end, i was that i was listening to it and was like i don't know real. what this is but it sounds pretty breathy it was a really odd mixture of instruments and i I, i'm sticking to my guns on this one i think some of you think it was real real. okay but the timpani was definitely real regardless though the end product gave us something that made this episode feel extremely jarring like different than any other walker episode we've watched so far um but it wasn't just the music like the music was quasi western like it started out with the western harmonica and then halfway through bridged into these really sharp horn sounds and you're like, oh, what, what, what am I thinking? But it still kind of had like a Western feel to it. And then the fact that most of the sets were not the standard stereotypical sets we're used to seeing in a Walker episode, it gave this whole episode a totally different feel. It's kind of reminiscent of Swan Song. Yeah. There's also a few scenes that I noticed that there was no music at all. And it wasn't for any particular reason. Like like halfway through the episode, I'm like, did they run out of budget for the music in this? When they were doing like paperwork and you're like, what? Or, or even other scenes, <laughs> like they were flying around and other things and it was just randomly music was gone. But I don't know. There was a few things that like started to rock out and then they brought in MIDI horns and it just like sank the ship. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I'm 100% out on the music in this episode. I think <laughs> oh, it's... Oh no, man. I may be in for all the wrong reasons, but I'm in. Yeah. Right. It, well, if, the, if the music is an actor, right? If the music's like the the extra person on stage, 
Like it's like they put someone who uh, was from like like a Shakespearean actor on the stage or something. It's like I don't know what's happening right now, mm, mm-hmm. but this is like clearly happening in a, in a different universe than this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are we still in the first scene? Oh yeah. oh yeah, we haven't even got to the birds yet. <laughs> yeah. So another thing that uh, makes this episode stand out from some of the other ones we've seen is that there's a lot of detective work going on. There's some deductive reasoning. Mm-hmm. There's uh, clue finding, some twists and turns along the way as well, and that's pretty different from the Walker that we have been viewing most of the weeks we've been doing the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So the first clue Walker gets is he's about to slake his thirst with some ice cold lemonade or something. (laughs) Yeah. Alex comes up to him on horseback. She's like, can I treat you to a lemonade? And he's like, oh, there's crows circling (laughs) something off in the distance. Vultures, please. Okay. (laughs) No, no, no. no. Not crows. Not vultures. Buzzards. Buzzards. (laughs) Right. Is a buzzard actually a bird or is it just a nickname for... Buzzard is a nickname used in the States for, like, vultures, but the actual buzzard in Europe is basically a red-tailed hawk. Hmm. So Which we hear. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we hear them a lot, uh, including in this. So, yeah, he, he's like, oh, I want to go see what those buzzards are circling over. Yeah. And he could have got the lemonade first. You know, I mean, come on. He could have. No time. Nope. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> he can wait. That can wait. They can ride off a couple miles away and check some out and come back for the lemonade. So, <laughs> But they show this clip, which is 100% stock footage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's of kites somewhere in the tropics circling over a rainforest. So now, there you now go. not like kites you'd run on the beach, but they're actual birds, right? Yeah, they're really delicate hawks. And they're like on a blue sky background and it's like stock footage of that for a little bit. And then like Walker looks up and like <laughs> almost, he doesn't really communicate with them, but he probably does, right? It's implied that he has some connection to them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we see that in a minute because he and Alex are like, okay, well, we'll go see what these buzzards are doing. Like, I don't know why anyone would tag along and be like, oh yeah, there's probably just a dead cow at the end of this. Let's go check it out. Well, because you you don't don't want to drink lemonade alone. She's not going to go over there and drink a sad lemonade by herself. She might as well go see what dead thing the buzzards are around. That's not sad. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, predictably, they get there and they chase the birds off, in theory. Uh, They kind of get there and you hear, like, some hawk noises. So it's, like, implied that they chase birds off. And then Walker looks up towards the sky and you get some more stock footage this time of a uh, young bald eagle getting chased by crows <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's like okay all right <laughs> there are your buzzards <laughs> yeah and uh you know i mean that seems like a pretty noble death if his corpse was being eaten by a bald eagle i mean for yeah, the, yeah. a law for enforcement a officer yeah. that's that's high praise yeah that's yeah. mother nature saying you did something right right top of the food chain <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, suffice it to say, they find, uh, Bill Cox's dead body and Walker's like, go get the ME. When he flipped him over, it was like a surprise that it was him, <laughs> you know? Well, we know it's a surprise because the music goes, bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> yep, yep. So it's kind of like his body's laid over and then Walker rolls him over and realizes another one of his old friends died in his episodes. Yeah. But in case we were sleeping during the first scene, Alex goes, he was one of your good friends, wasn't he? And Walker's (laughs) like, yep. (laughs) Sure was. Another one. that lemonade? (laughs) I mean, we have to come up with a hashtag dead old friend at this point. I think that just kind of comes with the territory, right? <laughs> most, most of the time, I think like fifty percent they die, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Particularly if they're, if they're older than Walker and they're an old friend, mm, he gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he's like, "Oh, go get the Emmy, like the Emmys at his Kick Drugs Out of America thing up the road, or something." <laughs> So they go get him, and Walker's doing some detective work. He's like, yep, there's some 18-wheelers. This is the first time we hear 18-wheeler in the episode, but it's uh, probably the first time of 40. They say 18-wheeler every time they have a chance to say it. They could just say and, truck, I guess, but... Nope, 18-wheeler, Bob. It takes okay. a lot more work to get 18 wheels. Yeah, so he sees some paint rubbed off on a log, and he knows that they're white, and uh, he knows there were two of them. At this point, he's doing his whole dispatch and everything, and Alex is like, 
If you get me probable cause, I'll get you your warrants. Just let me know how many. And <laughs> yeah. and randomly, Walker's like, make it four. Like, what? <laughs> well, because he probably saw the footprints, right? <laughs> I wrote this down like, why? Why four? And why does she need to know how many? Like, she doesn't have any information yet. She's like, well, this way I can fill out all the paperwork and just fill in the names. Right, right. What? <laughs> So, uh, you know, that's all good. And this is where we meet Bill Cox's self-proclaimed deputy, who's named Virgil. And he's kind of got that Trent vibe going on. Yeah. I thought he was kind of like maybe a a cowhand or he knew the ins and out of uh, raising cattle. So that's why he was going to help Walker out. But then they mention he's a deputy at some point. So I'm like, oh, he's kind of a lawman, but maybe he's not. But it it didn't really matter because... I think he uh, just said that... In relationship to the the dead guy, he was just like, yeah, I was sort of his deputy. I think he made yeah. some comment like that. But that yeah. was, oh, okay. So okay. Just, yeah. just in uh, like a um, honorary, maybe. Casual. Okay. Casual. A, a casual, casual Fling. assistant. Maybe showed up on the weekends and. Mm. Mm, I don't know um, where this is going. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, so, meanwhile, we see these two white trucks. They pull into this abandoned airport hangar or something like that. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. And one of the guys is all like, man, I don't know. We really got ourselves in some hot water by uh, trampling that old guy, that lawman. This has gotten way more serious. And mustache guy's like, what, you getting cold feet now? We got so much money with these cows. And they're all like, oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. And at this point, we realize that uh, one of the other guys that's in the cattle rustling operation is the uh, short dude with the mullet who faces off against Walker in the juggernaut <laughs> I was in the bar. If that oh, was yeah. him, yeah, yep, hundred percent. He's a stunt guy. Yeah, I definitely recognize his hair. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. And he did the stunt coordination in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, so you know he's legit. Most definitely, yeah. Um, that basically establishes where the trucks are. And meanwhile, back at the crime scene, Virgil's like, oh, I want to come along with you and avenge my mentor here. And Walker's all like, nah, you better stay home. And Virgil's like, either I'm going to find these guys or you are. But I know a lot about these cattle rustling operations. And I know the ins and outs probably better than you do. And he says probably better than you do. And Walker's all like, maybe. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, so he takes Walker to a, a small time cattle rustling operation and there's a bit of a showdown here. I love this. Yeah. And this is very much like old school Walker, Texas Ranger, where he shows up and people don't respect the badge. No, no, they don't. They yeah. actually ask him, Who are you? What are you going to do about it? And he's like, Walker points to his badge, Texas Ranger. <laughs> There's a lot of awkwardness about the title of this TV show and how it's weird. There's a comma and all this other stuff. I will say that the comma represents him pointing to his badge. Ooh, Done. Okay. That's a good point. On the same network, a show that you and I used to watch too, Evan. Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman? No. Dr. Quinn. Comma? Medicine Woman. Okay. Yeah? Here's the question. Is it diagnosis, comma, murder? No, it's not. See, they they weren't on the same network as Walker and Dr. Quinn. What about Sons, comma, of Thunder? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's a name and then your occupation. It is weird that the name of Walker, Texas Ranger is Walker, comma, Texas Ranger. No, I think grammatically a comma should follow a name. If that it, name it, is a For a title of a show, though, man, that's just weird. It's just, it's odd. On the socials, we posted up Adam's walker illustration for the episode Test of Faith. Well, Sharon Simpson was like, love this episode. She said, I watched this episode the other day. I like the ending when he helps a girl with her physio. Oh, jeez. And, uh, the part that we just railed on. <laughs> we did rail on it. but <laughs> Literally. <laughs> but speaking of walker, comma, something, I responded with... Walker, physical therapist. <laughs> really, I mean, it's his name, a comma, then his occupation. So. Yeah, and he was undercover, so he was middle Walker. school math teacher. Okay, so Oil let me just say this now because I didn't, I didn't get to say this during that episode. But why the hell is Walker helping her with her recovery? Why is he so close to her? 
He's known her for like a week, <laughs> and he's her substitute math teacher. Why does he go to church with kids for no reason? <laughs> well, like, you can at least believe that he has some long history with kids that show up in the show, and they try to build that up. But in this, we saw the first time he meets this girl, and it's days prior to her doing rehab. It's nuts. Why is he the one holding her hand instead of her parents? He feels I don't a know. sense of responsibility, it. and his name is in the show. Yeah, and he's a walker, physical therapist, <laughs> comma, Texas Ranger. Technically, he could be a medicine man. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really good episode, guess. We're nailing it here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so he shows up, and these guys are all like, you got some brass on you. And they're like, who the heck are you? And he's like, I'm Walker, Texas Ranger. Hello? And this guy, Comma, Texas this, Ranger. Yeah. This guy tries to come up behind him, and he's like, don't try it. Don't make me work for this. Yeah. And they're all like, Oh, we're going to make you work. And they just like try to jump him and a classic fight ensues. And we see Virgil and Virgil, he's doling out some roundhouse he's kicks. He's throwing down. He yeah, throwing I was surprised. Down. And uh, he was like kind of pushing Walker to come along to Virgil's like, I want to come along because Bill Cox is a friend of mine and I want to make sure that justice is done. And this is my hood. I want to make sure everything's kosher. So I want to come along. And you're like, oh, great. This pretty boy is not going to be able to do anything. For a minute, I thought it was like, uh, this is the next, like, Trent or something. Or it was like a temporary sidekick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Temporary number three. He kind of usurped Trevette's role because Trevette was off doing something else. So he was kind of riding shotgun with Walker in this episode. And yeah, you're like, man, is this his new protege or whatever? But a bad guy ran it at Virgil and you're like, is he going to get hurt or something? No, he lets loose a savage kick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty intense. The fight culminates in sort of the lead bad guy who I thought I recognized from Wishbone. I remember an episode where he plays uh, Dionysus, I believe the, the god of drink and mirth, which would be us. Yep. When somebody asks if you're a god, you tell them yes. You say yes. Mirth. Yeah, so he's like face first in a cow pie and, you know, they didn't really get the answers they were looking for anyways from there. They just kind of, I guess, used that to show that you know what? They used it to put a fight in, and I'm cool with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. 100%. I was like, what was the point of that? Who cares? It was a fight. We do kind of need to uh, emphasize that Walker does deliver a bad guy's face to a cow pie. Yeah. We see the slow roll of the guy pulling his mm. face out of a cow patty. Right. And Walker delivers the one-liner of, I told you not to make me work for this. But it's good for exfoliation. Right, and if this were season five, you'd get a wry uh, lick from a harmonica before you cut to commercials. <laughs> Instead, you get incredibly suspenseful brass playing <laughs> during that. Brass. Like, even when he's delivering this humorous one-liner, it's like, <laughs> What just happened? Meanwhile, Trevette is doing some real leg work. He's down at the stockyards to investigate how they've possibly taken this R brand that's on the cattle that were stolen and uh, how they could potentially be altering it in some way to disguise that they've stolen these cattle. And so he's trying to get some info on local cattle brands from the stockyard operator who, you know, he's got the deets on everything. But uh, this guy is starstruck by James Trevette. Um, and uh, we learn a little bit about Jimmy's brief stint as a wide receiver playing for America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. And this guy at the stockyard, he is a fan. A big fan. <laughs> and this guy, he looks like he could be on the TV show Hee Haw. His laugh is phenomenal. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And Trevette's trying to get information from him, but all he wants to talk about is Trevette's career on the Dallas Cowboys. Cut short by injury, of course. He's like, oh, you're go long Trevette. Go long Trevette, am I right? And then Trevette's like, uh, yeah, 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 that's me. But I need this evidence. And he's like, remember the time we did this? And you <laughs> didn't, I don't know much about football, but you ran it down the line, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. And then he's like, go long, Trevette. And you're like, how long is this scene going to go, go on? Go long, T. Go yeah. long, T. Go long, T. Oh, go long yeah. Tea. <laughs> well, we actually hear this in the episode Behind the Badge. 
he goes out on a date with a news reporter he's trying to impress, and it comes out during the date that he goes on that his nickname was Go Long Trevette. And I don't think they said T. I think they said his full name. And that kind of implies something else. Fanfic. Leave that in the fanfic, (laughs) please. But yeah, so we've heard that nickname before in the episode Behind the Badge. So it's part of the Trevette mythos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, he's able to basically get this guy's book of brands so he can start cross-referencing things. So This whole episode is based on branding cattle, which I know absolutely nothing about. Trevette was trying to get his master list of all the brands for cattle in Texas, which this guy had a secret book of, which was like a three-ring binder with like three pages in it. Which doesn't make sense for ranchers to keep that stuff secret. Because the whole idea is that they mark the cattle that they own. <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> so you kind of want to be able to say, this cow belongs to me or whatever. But Right. Trevette's super fan, who gave him the binder of all the cow brands, was like, look, they're probably taking the cattle out of state because these brands are less recognizable outside of Texas. Not sure how true that is. Yeah, but I don't really follow it. Okay. Well, yeah. easy enough. <laughs> yeah. So we're like, okay, whatever, cattle brands, let's just see the next fight. So what happens next? (laughs) Yeah, well, I will say this, once again, this is an early season instance of Trevette doing something, and he's doing it very well, which I don't know if they'd really portray him doing it particularly well later on, or maybe they just wouldn't show him doing it later on and it would just be done. He'd be like, oh, yeah, I did this, and then we can get on to the next fight. Yeah, but I kind of was (laughs) expecting... This is my walker eyes that I'm putting on. I was kind of expecting the whole thing to get sidelined by this guy being distracted by Trevette's past and Trevette not to be able to get anything done because of that. But instead, not only does he get it done, but the guy does it because of his past. He was a fan. Yeah. Yeah. So now Walker and Virgil are going to visit an informant that Virgil knows. And they basically have a ridiculous chase scene. We might add Walker's like, well... We didn't really get any information out of those guys, so what do we do now? And Virgil's like, I might know a guy, kind of slyly, and he's like, okay, well, what's his name? Pretty much, Virgil says, you can follow me. I'll lead you to him so that he can go along, too. And Walker kind of slyly grins and says, oh, all right. So they go shake down this informant, and they have this really long chase scene through a meat locker. And this guy's actually pretty awesome. He looks absolutely terrified. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was funny, too, because they rolled up. He's just, like, immediately kind of looks scared and then just runs away. It's like, <laughs> seems like an interesting response. The Perfect. moment he sees the truck, he's kind of, like, cautious. And then when he sees Virgil walk out, he's kind of even more cautious. And then when he sees Walker's badge, he's like, I'm going to just start off in the other direction, booking it. <laughs> <laughs> and they run through this like meat house like for five minutes i had to i had to stop and be like is this exciting the music says it's exciting i'm yeah, not sure yeah. it's been going the on a while well they rented it out so they had to use yeah, it yeah this know? is where the timpanies really come in in full force yeah yeah i feel like if someone watched this chase out of context with the music and everything they'd have no idea what they were watching <laughs> It's a chromatic stuff. Dissonant. And- yep, yep, that's about right. <laughs> so yeah, once they finally catch this guy, because it's inevitable, right? Virgil starts laying on the heat and starts like punching stuff and really threatening the guy. And he finally cracks and he's like, my cousin, he's got some 18 wheelers. Boom, 18 wheelers. So it mm. can't possibly be anything else. It's got to be the cattle. Yeah. And he, he rents them out, doesn't ask any questions or anything, but uh, there's some high rollers who are using them. And so they're like, okay, we need the plate numbers. And they go to check out those plates. Right. And Walker is like, hey, look, you didn't have to be that aggressive with them. Let me do the cop stuff. Right. And Virgil's like, I got the information, didn't I? He's making a hard play for partner here. He must have watched Lone Wolf McQuaid. He could have. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Meanwhile, Trevette is continuing to research brands. And not like JCPenney brands. We're talking about brands on horses here, right? On cattle. Cows, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, whatever. Okay. Four legs. We get it. Yeah. Four legs and the truth. (laughs) 
You eat one, you don't eat the other. But other than that, they're pretty much the same. <laughs> you ride on one, you get trampled by the other. So that's what we're learning from this. Yeah. And uh, he's sort of doing a little arts and crafts project, taking the R and trying to see what you can do with a branding iron and a little bit of creativity. And Alex is all like, what are you doing over here? And Trevette's all like, hey, you ever heard of the phrase, go long T? Yeah, he was like asking Alex yeah, like, if huh? she... Hit, heard of it? Uh, yeah. 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 If, if you heard like my catchphrase when I was, you know, on the Dallas Cowboys and she's like, oh, isn't that like oolong tea? Yeah. She thinks he's talking about oolong tea. Yeah. <laughs> and then he kind of just like defeated, doesn't bring it up because it would be kind of weird to be like, oh, remember when I was on the Dallas Cowboys and, uh, and she's they like, had shut amazing- up, Trivet. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, so while they're having that conversation, he gets uh, faxed over some uh, info and, and he learns about a group that's actually got some brands that possibly match some of the altered ones that he's uh, been brainstorming. So he goes to check those out. Altered cattle brands, right? Yep. Okay. Okay. Meanwhile, uh, Walker and Virgil, they take those plate numbers and they actually find the trucks that match those plates. They're able to stop them. There's a roadblock uh, with some cop cars, including like a really cheap looking fake cop car that I just assumed they'd blow up this episode. Oh, I was waiting was for that. 80s Mustang. Yeah, I was really disappointed that they didn't blow that thing yeah, up. I thought it was marked once you saw yeah. it. It's like, ooh, <laughs> yeah. that, that car's right. not got longer right. than like, <laughs> That thing is not a Crown Vic. What is happening here? <laughs> um, but yeah, you know something's up when the truck actually stops for the roadblock and doesn't blow through it. Um, right. So they look in the back and instead they're not busting cattle. It's actually a b- a bunch of computer monitors, which you wouldn't think are a big ticket item these days. But back in 1994, man, mm-hmm. those projection screen computer monitors, whew, big bucks. With a static on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Make oh, a yeah. loud little high pitched noise and you turn them yeah. on. Yeah, you Make don't a wear l- a sweater around those. Those yeah. are the days. They get super hot. <laughs> Yeah, so they made a bust, but it wasn't the right bust. Just too bad. Still a good bust, man, Virgil says. I like it when he said that, because I'm like, how are you going to make this stick? Like, you pulled them over for something else? (laughs) I'm pretty sure that doesn't work that way in the law, but hey, whatever. No, man, I think that was one of the warrants that he got. Oh, right. He does have a a blank warrant uh, (laughs) notepad in his truck. (laughs) He just fills in the name. His back pocket warrant stash. Yeah. So they're riding back and uh, they hear from Trevette, who's in the helicopter. He's like, yeah, I found some brands that kind of match some of these things. And and Walker's like, man, we kind of hit a dead end here. Let's meet over at Bill Cox's place and uh, look for some clues there. Can I just yeah. ask, why yeah. was he in the helicopter? <laughs> yeah, Trevette was like, <laughs> while he's talking to Walker, he's in the helicopter and He's been going around from each of these cattle ranches talking to ranchers, maybe because it's easy to jump from ranch to ranch in helicopter. It seems excessive. Uh, so it's got a lot cooler. Oh, no, man, cooler. it's Texas. Texas is huge. It's true. And yeah. ranches are enormous. So. Yeah, yeah, so it might be more normal than we think. Trevette was literally in- investigating all those brandings by jumping from ranch to ranch, talking to all the ranch owners. And I'll say, if that's Jim, the uh, helicopter driver, he gets a lot of screen time in this episode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's Jim. It's definitely him. Yeah. Killer shades on that guy, yeah. too. And uh, he is in a lot because they use that helicopter a lot in this episode i mean yeah once you see trevet just toying around in it for no reason you're like oh they've got to be using this later and they do maybe mm-hmm. he just gets like traded off between different like groups of law enforcement it's like oh we got the chopper this afternoon so uh i'm yeah. just gonna use that to go around <laughs> why drive <laughs> the best is when they show up at the house in the truck and then the helicopter's just sitting on the front lawn like <laughs> yeah. yeah like he didn't take out the mailbox or anything no, it's, it's like just, right there <laughs> Yeah, so this- Walker tells Trevette to meet him over at Bill Cox's house, and he and Verger drive over in the truck, and when they pull up, the helicopter is sitting <laughs> on the ground in front of the house. We don't see Trevette until he walks around the helicopter, and you're like, I guess he flew there. Yeah. Yeah. So Virgil's all like, what are you thinking you're going to find here? Like, we looked at Bill's office, like, there wasn't anything there, and Walker's like, man, he lived alone. You know, he took all this stuff home with him. 
He was an old bachelor. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. Like, like uh, Walker knows it well. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, what I'm going to be. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Walker finds the key under the mat because, uh, you know, Bill Cox is old school. He played by the old rules. Yeah. So they sort of comb around in his trailer and find some photos that were taken through, you know, a telephoto lens or whatever. And they're like, oh, man, Virgil, you recognize this guy at all? And he's like, nope. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, and they're like, oh, this guy knew everybody before, but he doesn't know this guy, I guess. Right. And then- it's the stash guy. You'd know that stash anywhere. Yeah, Come on. You wouldn't forget that. that. That's a pretty distinguished stash. And Virgil's like, man, I need a beer. And he goes to the fridge, and there's like a sticker on the fridge that says, don't mess with Texas. Yeah. But there are no beers in the fridge. Mm. Yeah. He complains about it. Uh, so they're like, okay, well, I think we got a face now to, to try to figure out. They found a photo of the back of a truck as well. And Trevette's like, hey, I could get my computer algorithm to <laughs> enhance the photo and determine what the license plate is. And the computer is smarter yeah. than us. Yeah, the computer enhancement, that'll do it. He kind of explains it pretty well in layman's terms. Like that kind of stuff actually is possible now. <laughs> like, yeah. Or then it would just smooth the lines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, dare we say, did this inspire things like CSI? To go above and beyond what they can enhance. <laughs> totally, totally. Is this the first photo enhance on TV? Maybe. Who knows? It could be. It might be. I think we should say it is. Let's do it. Yeah. Prove us otherwise. <laughs> totally. Because I, honestly, as history has proven, Walker doesn't lift any of the themes from its show or ideas from other shows. So, Except for Mufasa getting trampled. But besides that, we're good. <laughs> Definitely not six months after those things come out. Yep. Or, you know, Chuck Norris would never ape Rambo's headband either in Lone Wolf McQuaid. That would never happen. So So, while they're going back to the office, Virgil's like, oh, hey, Walker, can you drop me off at my office? I have some stuff I need to take care of. And this is the point where I was like, oh, yeah, what does this guy actually do? (laughs) Yeah. 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 I think he says, I got something that I want to look into. It's very vague what he says. And you're like, okay, okay. All right. So they go back to uh, headquarters and we see Virgil and he's tooling around in this super sick Jeep Wrangler. Peeling through some roads. Then he actually pulls up to the hangar where the two semi trucks are hiding with the cattle that Walker's looking for. And you're like, oh, is he really a bad guy? And so he gets out of his Jeep, right? And he kind of sneaks in and you're like, well, maybe he's doing like a reconnaissance mission thing or he's he's gonna take him out himself to to avenge bill cox yeah or something like that and he can you describe how he maneuvers under the semi truck i was just blinded the timpani in this scene was just (laughs) boom 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 boom. it was like call and response with the weird horn thing the weird like (laughs) the baritone <laughs> yeah so so he's creeping around in his like you know tight jeans or whatever in his ridiculous cowboy hat and he's like okay well i found one of the trucks now i need to creep under the truck so i'm not detected <laughs> so so as he crouches down to get under the truck he removes his hat too because you know you don't want to hit your hat on the top of the it was slick. On the top of the truck it was it was slick and he pops out on the other side of it, puts his hat back on. You know, maybe it's because he was under a roof, you know, like he shouldn't <laughs> wear your hat inside. That's like a gentleman Texas thing. That's so he's true. Under the car, he's like, oh, something's above me. I can't wear that. Uh, That's true. It's a little low. So yeah. you got to yeah. gotta go for it. He is in a hangar too, though. So That's a high roof, though. Yeah. Right. It's like yeah, if you were yeah, in a stadium, yeah. you'd still wear your hat. Okay. These are Texan ground rules we're just not familiar with. So right, if yeah. anyone is familiar with the, the etiquette of a cowboy hat and whether you wear it inside a hangar and or underneath an 18 wheeler please let us know <laughs> yeah. yeah um so yeah he creeps out and he's creeping around and he looks inside the truck and you're like man he's doing some real detective work right and then mustache guy shows up behind him right and you're like okay now we'll know if they're in it together or not and virgil I th- does he punch him what, yeah, what happens socks him doesn't he yeah he does some serious like ninja moves on the guy yeah, and so you're like, oh, Virgil, he is good. He's going Still after good guy. mustache yeah. guy. But then he goes, what were you thinking? Killing Bill Cox. That's just going to throw attention on the operation. And then you're like, oh, wow. 
see what they did there. Twist. twist. It's pretty good. Pretty good twist. Yeah, it was decent twist for a while. The reveal here. was later than you normally, you know, like, yep. you'd think maybe if you just saw him and then started yelling at him, but he hits him first. So, yeah, that was good. And a lot of Walker episodes, they do the twist, but you would have met the character like two minutes before. Or we would have known before Walker did in later <laughs> seasons. Yeah. Right. So it was good. So we're like, yeah. oh, well, this guy's been palling around with Walker. So he's obviously been covering his tracks and keeping in touch with what Walker knows so that he can keep everybody ahead of the uh, cattle. Uh, what is it called? Rustling. Cattle rustling or wrestling? Rustling. I tried looking it up. The etymology of cattle rustling is cloudy as all get out. No one really understands where it came from. It's kind of like Hoosier. No one knows what that's all about either. Okay. But it's basically, that's like the Western slang for stealing cattle, which is a major crime. Not wrestling cattle. No, it's that's like you're thing. rustling up some grub. You know, and Bob, did you really tip a cow? <laughs> Several. No. <laughs> Only in his dreams. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, he's all like, man, well, they're onto us now, and they're, they're going to find those plates any moment now. They're using a computer to enhance some photos, so they're going to get those license plates. <laughs> and he's like, okay, what I need you guys to do is we're going to head east to Louisiana, but we need to leave these plates behind because they're going to find them and leave behind some maps that have north written all over them so they think we're going up to oklahoma yeah they're like take out your maps and just like write north on them because yeah. then they'll obviously believe that right that's yep. what you made it, yeah and yep. who leaves their map behind if they're not using it <laughs> right well i was thinking these things like i was like okay well i can imagine them like circling something on a map and maybe leaving one map behind or something like they're not going to be that obvious about it but uh <laughs> later on we see yeah they they um left yeah, they, all the maps they left the hay everywhere it's like very obvious that there was cattle here <laughs> yeah and if like say you were switching license plates right you wouldn't leave the old license plates <laughs> behind necessarily but the only reason they did was to prove that they were there and that that was the hideout for the police so i get why they left them but like if they didn't know the police were going to find them then you wouldn't have left them yeah the logic is a little twisted but hey, you know, it's all good. Meanwhile, back at uh, Ranger HQ, <laughs> Trevette's program is uh, going to town on this photograph. And, uh, you know, it's really working hard on these license plates. And it's ready to crack the code. And it's at this point I realized that the photo they're working off of is a photo of the same exact tractor trailer that they busted earlier on that had the computer monitors in it. So as far as the TV show goes, they were using like the same two tractor trailers for that scene. <laughs> but if you look at the pattern of rust on the bumper the um, and the stickers oh. on the back, it's the same tractor trailer, 100%. Well, maybe that tractor trailer they actually ditched. And then they took the plates and they actually put on a new tractor trailer. It just looks kind of the same, you know? Yeah. It's possible. I it's possible. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Virgil was involved, so. It's true. Maybe he hoodwinked me as well. <laughs> Sounds um, like he did. Gotcha. Loser. Yep. So uh, Trevette's <laughs> computer program is just about to crack the code when uh, Walker gets an anonymous tip from someone on the phone, basically giving him the license plate numbers and the location where those vehicles were seen. Right. So, and we should note that Virgil says that Walker's going to get an anonymous tip, and Virgil made it a point to be in the ranger's office when the anonymous tip came in. He was like, oh, oh, wow, okay, kind of playing it off. Yep. I couldn't have been the one to give the anonymous tip. I was here. So Trevet gets scooped on his computer program, and Walker sends some uh, locals to go out to this hangar to check things out. And sure enough, they find the license plates, the hay, and maps with uh, <laughs> their, their location circled on it, a huge arrow and highlighter, <laughs> And the word north, north yeah. written right across it. Like, hmm. I wonder where they're going. Do you think All they're right. going south? It says here right. north. All right. Literally says. If Walker north. found that, or if any detective found that, they'd be like, yeah, okay, this isn't what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's these two, like, uh, you know, just sort of patrolmen who find it, and they're like, oh, okay, they have taken okay. the maps with them. You're right. 
Yeah. Yeah, this is pre-map quest here. Yeah, they so. didn't have GPS. All right. Yeah, come on now. So, uh, you know, they scramble all units and everyone's going north on the major highways looking for two tractor trailers. And uh, Walker asks Virgil, he's like, all right, we're going to go out and try to get these guys. You want to come along, Virgil? And Virgil's like, you guys can take your helicopter. I'm going to stay on the ground. And uh, I know these back roads really well. And, and you guys will check the main roads. I'll check the back roads. It's just unbelievable because Walker knows those back roads better than Virgil. Completely. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Did he know who he was talking to? I mean, clearly. <laughs> clearly he didn't. We'll get into that later, too. But yeah, he definitely doesn't know. Um, so instead, uh, they take off in the helicopter and start heading north. And, and uh, he goes to the bank and takes out this giant black duffel bag full of cash from his safety deposit box, throws in his Jeep and drives off. Meanwhile, back in the chopper, Jim, the helicopter guy, is all like, so you want to just keep heading north? And uh, Walker's like, nope, we're going to head east. And Trevette's like, yeah, all signs point to north, so let's do east. <laughs> like right, they, yeah. they, they both figured it out like, yeah, this is way too obvious. Let's head east here. Yeah. <laughs> Why east? Because I got to get out of state. And the closest yeah. place besides okay. Oklahoma would probably be, was it Louisiana? Louisiana, yeah. Okay. So Walker and Trevette follow the highway east in their helicopter with Jim, and they finally come up on the two 16-wheelers they're looking for. And they're 18-wheelers? They're 18 <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> How many times did they say that in the episode? Like at least 20. They finally come up on the four-wheelers oh they're looking for. 18 wheelers, 18 wheelers. 13 wheelers, it's only got one in the front. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they come up on these trucks and like, okay, that's what we're looking for. They let everyone know and and the locals come out and they try to block off the 18 wheelers and you know something's wrong because they don't stop for the roadblock. So once again... Can we describe this roadblock? Two cop cars kind of pulled out and they got the cops got out of their cars and pulled their guns out, right? Yep. And then Walker's helicopter comes down behind them. Yeah. And the helicopter doesn't land. It's still hovering. So you're like, he ain't no fool. Jim's not going to land if he yeah. thinks he might get hit by a Mack truck. Uh, yeah. And sure enough, it doesn't stop. But it also didn't hit the cop cars. I really wanted it to hit the cop cars. Yeah. The, the cop cars both back up way. extremely fast. And the game of chicken was almost impossible because weren't they outside of their car with their guns drawn? And then when they're like, oh, crap, he's actually going to hit us. They had enough time to get into the cars and back up. I don't know. They're trained professionals. I know Jim can handle. I'm not sure about uh, (laughs) these deputies, but they get through and Walker is in the helicopter. And earlier he was screaming into his bullhorn. He's like, Texas Ranger, pull over. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Doesn't this scene remind you of an episode we've seen already with the blue bullhorn? What episode was that? This almost looks like it could have been clips from this episode in that episode. It was behind the badge. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because he shoots out a tire on a tractor trailer. (laughs) Yep, with a shotgun just like this, and he has the same blue bullhorn. It looked very familiar. Wait, you guys are saying this is the same exact footage from another episode? Yes. I think they reused it in behind the badge in the later season. That is amazing. So back to it. What happened? (laughs) It's like they reset the chase. It's like, okay, they could have just not done any of that stuff, but yeah, they've reset the chase. Walker's in the helicopter, he's got the bullhorn, and he's yelling at them to stop. He asked Trevette, get that out of the back for me, will you? Hands him a <laughs> pump action 12 gauge. <laughs> and we're like, yes, okay. Yeah, it's like, yeah. great. And all the time wearing some amazing aviators, by the way. Yeah, yeah, they're fantastic. So he props himself out on the uh, on the rails, or the, uh, what did we learn those are called? Skids. 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 Yeah. So he props himself out in the skids. This is an <laughs> educational podcast it is, it first is. and foremost so much yeah <laughs> it's funny because he shoots twice then he shoots the tire he shoots the tire again afterwards <laughs> twice for good measure right the first 16 wheeler he shoots out the front tire and the thing starts peeling and slowing down and the other one behind it slows down so pretty much they're both just done because walker took out the front tire from a helicopter with a shotgun mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. can't beat that it's good it's good stuff I was expecting him to be that with a vehicular transference, though. I was really hoping for that, that he would go helicopter to 16-wheeler. 18-wheeler. 
I'm, 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 dude. You are Texas through and through, man. <laughs> Guys, I, I'm on the night crew. <laughs> gotcha. Well, I just assumed, like, okay, well, it's not going to be a vehicular transference here, but it's definitely going to be with that Jeep Wrangler that's topless, you know, Virgil's vehicle. That would have been perfect. Yeah, if he just dropped into the back seat. Yeah, that thing was asking for vehicular transference. <laughs> it was made for it, really. Yeah. It's in the user manual. I kind of assumed that would happen. Yeah. So, okay, they get these guys pulled over after their tires are shot out, and Walker and Trevette are reading them their rights, and Walker's like, okay, well, I'm going to leave you behind to deal with these guys. I'm going to go find Virgil. But he, he says to the bad guys, like, man, Virgil gave you guys up, and they're like, he's behind this whole thing, and they totally blew Virgil's cover. Hmm. They also and, didn't put up any fight, which I was kind of surprised by. Yeah, at least if they had taken a few kicks from Chuck Norris, it would have been fine, but... So Walker goes to find Virgil, and we see Virgil cruising around the dirt roads in the backwoods of Texas, and he comes around a corner and up over a hill, and uh, it's a helicopter in the middle of the street with Walker standing next to it. Just waiting for him to come up on the road. Mm. So he definitely knows the roads better than Virgil. There you for go. sure. For sure. There you go. And so Virgil pulls up, and he's like, am I missing something here? Or what's going on? And Walker's all like, thought you'd fooled all of us, but you hadn't. And Virgil's like, uh, maybe you can explain to me what you think is happening. And Walker's like, you're under arrest, bro. And uh, Virgil's like, let me show you this duffel bag here. And Walker just walks He's with like, him. Hold on, hold on. Let me, show you, let me just grab this bag. And Walker's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, out of my car. Just lean in and pull out this bag from my car. And he's like, this bag has a million dollars. I'll give you half. And Walker takes the bag, and Virgil's like, I'll give you all of it. Just let me go. Walker takes the bag and throws it to the ground. And he's like, yeah. I'm not interested in money, which Virgil is completely confused at this point. Like, right. I mean, he clearly doesn't know who Walker is. No. He's like, and you underestimated us. And he reaches into the grill of Virgil's Jeep. And pulls out what we can only assume is a bug. It's basically a uh, red button <laughs> with a, a piece device. of tape. Yeah. yeah, it's a tracking yeah. device, which is in '95 or whenever this was. Oof. I don't know if they could have done that. That's GPS pretty impressive. Tracker. Yeah, they, they had beeper tags, but that would have meant that someone was hanging out of the helicopter with one of those like six element antenna, sort of pointing <laughs> it around, being like, "Oh, he's over that way." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to imagine Walker doing some radio tracking. <laughs> you can do that. It looked like one resistor. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I'm gonna throw it out there. It was probably a prop. <laughs> or a pog. It was about pog sized. <laughs> yeah, medium sized slammer. It was it was a pog with like a a gumdrop glued to the top, a red gumdrop glued to the top of it. <laughs> that yeah, exactly. Uh so anyway, Walker tracked him, that's how he found him. But Virgil's like, Yeah, you want this cash? And obviously Walker's like, No, you're not gonna buy me off, you're going to jail. And dude, Virgil slams Walker. He gets some good hits in on Walker. I'm like, I've never seen Walker take as many punches. And, yeah, be on the ground and be like, oh. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty legit boss fight here. But uh, I think it's really more the uh, element of surprise. Yeah, kind of dazed Walker to begin with. Walker's on the ground. And then, I mean, I didn't see it coming, but Walker turns the fight around into his favor. Yeah, real big surprise there. <laughs> Did not see it coming. I was hoping for Virgil to take a little more kicking from Chuck Norris, but we did get the classic, this one's for Bill. Yeah. <laughs> and then he just kicks him in the face. He's out. Classic roundhouse. Oh, big time. great way to end the episode for sure. But the episode's not over. <laughs> Cut to uh, CD's Bar and Grill, our favorite establishment, mm -hmm. uh, where the heroes of the day, they've just celebrated <laughs> the passing of bill cox in i guess a celebration that he would have appreciated you know they're having drinks to commemorate that and you know cd just gets real weird for some mm. reason he's got a branding iron with him and he's like well this is america and <laughs> this old branding iron it's the most american thing out there because this is the only place where you mark something and it's yours that's like, what What are you talking about? Right. <laughs> what is right happening? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, and, all right, uh, so we got to cut off CD. <laughs> yeah. 
he was suggesting that like owning property was uniquely american or something which is yeah. very strange and branding is kind of a a weird thing too because it's like owning a living thing so yes. that's kind of like even weirder yep yep yeah cd was getting pretty strange <laughs> it, a um, lot of gray area and what he was getting into mm-hmm. and it was not clear but that was a great way to end the episode that's for yeah. sure i think we can all agree they cut him short with a toast and this one is mercifully over <laughs> all right that about sums up this episode we'd like to give a shout out to our friend and collaborator adam loritson who's been drawing the amusing walker strations on look our out, social medias <laughs> oh man be sure to check out his other art on instagram at at imagination run amok when we come back, it'll be time for us to each rate branded on a scale of 0 to 10 boots to the face, resulting in our patented Roundhouse Roulette episode ranking. The complete results of which are available on our website, roundhouseroulette.com. Don't go away. Jim, can you get me closer to those two 18-wheelers down yonder? Headed eastbound toward Louisiana. Sure thing, boss. Oh, hey there, podcast listener. You caught me in hot pursuit of some cattle robbing Texas trash. As you may or may not know, we here at Roundhouse Roulette have pledged to deliver the light of Walker, Texas Ranger to the world. If you'd like to lend us a hand on that mission, please share the pod with a friend or leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Likewise, if you'd like to impress your friends with your utter coolness, we've recently added some fresh new merch at roundhouseroulette.com or hit up our Patreon page. Most importantly, though, thank you for listening. Ooh. I got a little distracted there with my blabbering. Take her down lower, Jim. You got it. This is Roundhouse Roulette. Pull over to the side of the road. Podcast listeners, enjoy the rest of the show. All right, what did you guys think of this one? I enjoyed this episode because it was so different than the other ones we've been seeing as of late. It's kind of before things got a little more formulaic. And we also got to get out of the normal stage scenes of like the office and cd's bar and then maybe one other location this was at a bunch of different locations um so it was kind of refreshing on that aspect but this one was really slow we didn't have a lot of fighting i just i I wasn't really digging this episode it really didn't fulfill me uh how i needed to be fulfilled i'm giving this one a three whoa okay okay good well i recognize some of the shortfalls of this episode the music was not one of them, in my opinion. I thought the music was great. I thought the music was great. Yeah, music was good. In all of its terribleness, I thought it contributed a lot. And um, yeah, I don't know. For some, I kind of like this one because they kind of stayed in their lane. You know, talking about cow thievery and just really all Texas. And yeah, while there weren't as many fights as you would like to see, and there was some missed opportunities with cars exploding... I still, for some reason, kind of liked it. So I'm okay. just one of six. I don't know if I can justify it. I just, I kind of liked it. Yeah. I'm totally with you, Bob. I think this one is Texas through and through. It's super refreshing just in the context of our podcast to get an episode that doesn't try to tackle some heady issue like, uh, you know, yeah, that abuse helped. or gang violence right. or drugs. Instead, it's dealing with cattle rustling, which is something that's been a problem since the beginning of time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't steal someone else's cattle. Um, I think the branding stuff was weird minutia, but uh, also sort of Texas through and through. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah. I did not like the music. I found it incredibly <laughs> distracting and jarring, <laughs> but I respect the fact that you appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> it was ridiculous. Uh, the fight scenes were actually pretty dope, even though there are only two of them. I do think they must have spent all the budget on Jim the helicopter guy, and they didn't have any explosions, which I was really hoping there, there'd at least be one of mm. those. Come on now. So I'm with Bob. I give this one a six. I think it's a solid Walker episode. I loved the detective work aspect of it. I really like seeing things come together like that, and you rarely see that in Walker. Yeah, I I, I guess the reason why I'm sticking with a three is this one was kind of boring to me. It was that slow. (laughs) All right, well, that gives this episode a roundhouse rating of five boots to the face. (laughs) And I think we can all agree that Walker's detective work is just as sharp as his karate skills. <laughs> but please let us know what you think on social media or by emailing us at roundhouseroulette at gmail.com. 
When we come back, we'll spin that roundhouse roulette wheel and select next week's episode. And we're back. Bob, ready to spin that thing? Just keeps going, man. (laughs) Oh, I think this is a good one. Season four, episode seven, Final Justice. Sounds good, but I've been burned before by getting excited about names. I know. (laughs) Although he thought him long dead, Walker learns the racist who killed his parents is still alive. Whoa. Clue Gulliger and John Vernon guest star. Never heard of those people. Are, but that sounds intense. So this is going to be pretty high stakes for Walker. A storyline like that, you figure it's got to be pretty good. Yeah, we're going to get a real heavy dose of uh, Walker's Batman backstory here. <laughs> yeah. And I just hope there aren't too many flashbacks. I'm pretty sure we'll be getting uh, flashbacks of plenty on this one. Just like any Batman movie, I don't want flashbacks. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Well, we hope you'll all join us next week when we share our reactions to Season 4, Episode 7, Final Justice. In the meantime, share your opinions with us on Facebook and on Instagram at at Roundhouse Roulette and on Twitter at at Roundhouse Pod. And please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your fine podcasts. Thanks for listening, and until next week, may the eyes of the ranger be upon you. When you're in Texas looking behind you, oh, cause that's where the ranger's gonna be.